Yo, ladies, what's up? And this, it's your boy, Double B Bablet, the franchise player. And we're here live once again on the Roundtable Pro Wrestling Podcast. And tonight I have a very special interview, exclusive, so to speak. And I want to bring her in today. She is a recent graduate of the Nightmare Factory. That's Cody Rhodes' school in Atlanta, Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring in Karma Dean. Hey, Hi. welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So we had you on our Wednesday night podcast, mm-hmm. but I want to bring you in here and give you an opportunity to shine. Um, you're the new kid on the block, so to speak. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you just graduated from the Nightmare Academy. Yes. Uh, we talked about some of the hard work that went into that. Oh, gosh, yeah. What, what three things would you honestly say were the best part of that and what were the three worst things that were part of that? Uh, the best things I think was, well, first of all, I learned from some really incredibly talented coaches. Um, we had WCW's uh, Glacier, Ray Lloyd, as one of our coaches. Uh, he is probably one of the kindest men I've ever met in my entire life. Um, talk about setting the bar. Um, this man is incredible, um, not just as a performer in his time, but as a coach, as a mentor, and now as a colleague, it's just an incredible talent. Uh, I learned from Cody Rhodes, another incredible talent, of course. Uh, QT Marshall was also my coach. We had several coaches that uh, work with AEW. Um, we had uh, Dark Order's number 10, uh, Preston Vance. Uh, we no, had Preston. Uh, <laughs> Preston's, like, Preston's Preston. a good dude. Yeah, Coach Vance was great. Um, he was another incredible talent. Uh, we had Coach Allen, who was uh, number five in the Dark Order. We had uh, Big Shotty Lee as one of our coaches, and we also had Baron <laughs> Black. Uh, so they were all wonderful to work with. They all brought their own spin on on coaching. They all had a different flavor of teaching, which was great because we took a little bit from everybody and was able to make it our own. So I really appreciated having so many different coaches with so many different viewpoints on how to coach because it allowed me to develop my own character and to develop my own sense of style because I was able to take a little bit from there and take a little bit from there. So I really appreciated that. Um, another good thing I'd say is the, uh, the camarad, I can't say the word. It's always, okay, yes, <laughs> I always have trouble with that word. Camaraderie that I built with the other students in the class. Uh, there was a, a great sense of family among everyone, great sense of team. Uh, team playing was really big. Uh, everybody cheered for, for everybody. Nobody ever made anybody feel like, you know, because if they were struggling with something or I know myself coming into this, you know, I had a lot of experience with, um, in the entertainment industry. So the the art side of it was there. I had the fitness um, experience behind me, having many years as a fitness coach myself and also at doing fitness competitions. So I had the elements uh, to go into wrestling and to prepare for this career. But the actual skill of wrestling and learning it was something totally different that I had never learned before. So everyone was so patient with me, incredibly understanding, incredibly kind. And you built this this relationship with this team that you know when when it all ended and everybody kind of went out and started doing their own thing all you wanted was the best for everybody you you Mm -hmm. went out really wishing the best for everybody so i was really grateful humbled and blessed to have had that experience that was definitely one of the best things so the coaches the uh team building relationship that everyone built was incredible and i'd say the experience that i got out of it the showcase that we had at the end that was one of the best things too it was a display of everyone's hard work. Those 12 weeks, all in this one day, you know, all come, uh, accumulated in this showcase. And for me, when I got out there and I was, you know, the, the, all these cameras are in your face and the lights mm-hmm. are up and we had all this, this wonderful lighting and we had a, a great crew that put it all together. It all made sense. It was like, Every struggle, everything that I had been through those 12 weeks, good, bad, and indifferent, it was just, it all fell into place and everything was okay at that moment. It was like, wow, this incredible moment that I'm experiencing here on this stage with these incredibly talented people and this wonderful showcase, all of it makes sense now. It all led up to this. So that, for me, those three things was the greatest things that I had gotten out of the whole experience. The worst was probably... uh, the pain that I had felt the first couple of weeks. I mean, there's, <laughs> you Everyone know, says I was that. not prepared at all, no matter how much people said, you know, Hey, you know, it's, it's going to be something different that you've never experienced before. 
Holy gosh. I mean, I that remember first bump. that first bump, <laughs> that first everything, you know, getting into bed those first two weeks after having gone through that training, you know, like I'd mentioned on the podcast, you know, in the other podcast, it was like I had to literally take my leg and pull my leg up into bed. And, you know, if yep. I wanted to reposition my arm, I had to literally turn my other arm. It was, it was, you know, icy hot became my best friend. Ice packs oh, yeah. were my best friends, you know, and I seen patches and all that. Yeah. And I, you know, coming from years of fitness training and doing fitness competitions, I knew that diet was very important. That was actually 75% of the, of the battle was diet. And then the rest was the gym. It was actually true with this as well. You know, if you weren't doing the work, the homework, I should say, when you left training, and you weren't eating right and resting, stretching, you know, doing your yoga stretches on your days mm -hmm. off. You know, it's like one of the coaches said something that made a lot of sense. He says, you know, you, if you buy a Ferrari, all right, and you, you know, you put regular gas in it and you don't bother to get the oil chain, you just, you know, you treat it like a, an ordinary car. That car is going to break real fast. You can't train like a Ferrari and expect Ferrari results. And that, at first, it was like I had to think about. It. I said, you know what? That makes sense. If if I'm building this incredible sports car, you know, me being the sports car, you know, but I treat it like it's you know a, a toy model car. Mm -hmm. That car, you know, it's not going to be a Ferrari for very long. So it, it if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. The parallel example that they use. So. The pain was one of the worst things <laughs> and they're getting used to that new style of training. Um, the fact that it ended, you know, I wanted to keep going with it. Once the 12 weeks were over, you know, you were grateful for the weekends when they came around because your body needed the rest and mm -hmm. mentally you kind of had to reset yourself. But once it was all over with, that's how I kind of knew that I made the right decision and that my love for this business and me wanting to become a professional wrestler, it was justified at the end of those 12 weeks when I didn't want this to end, you know, and I wanted to, oh, like, oh, can, just one more week, just two more weeks. Come on, just, just extend that a little bit further because <laughs> my desire to learn more was at an all time high when it ended. Like I'm like, oh, yeah, this is the could. word you use. You said desire. The desire, yeah. yeah, it was at an all time high. And it was like at the end of those 12 weeks, the hunger to keep going was insatiable. I wanted to learn more. I wanted to have more. I just wanted to keep going with it. And I felt like once I hit the high note, I had to keep going to hit it even higher, you know, mm -hmm. and, and there had to be a higher note than that. So the fact that it ended was the worst thing. And um, a third one, I'm trying to think, uh, you know, I just, I, I can't say, you know, I, I'm just starting out new in this business. So I can't say, you know, everyone starts out at a certain level and you have to build layers. You can't start out, you know, at the top, there's so much left for me to learn and I'm willing to learn, you know, it's not like I feel like at the end of the 12 weeks, I know everything. I I've only scratched the surface. There's so much left to learn. That is the most profound thing yeah. Yeah. a rookie has ever said. 28 <laughs> years in this business. Okay. That is two decades. That's two and like a third decades. I've been wrestling. Yeah. Okay. I will yeah. be 47 years old and this will be my 29th year as a professional wrestler this wow. year. Wow. That's great. And you know, I don't know shit. <laughs> That's how I feel. <laughs> the I mean, moment it's... I know everything, I'm just going to go ahead and quit. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> because there's nothing else to learn. I you learn agree. something new every day. Every match I've ever had over the course of 28 years, I've learned mm -hmm. something new. You That's know. how I felt with fitness uh, competitions. I felt like, you know, you never stop learning. Every mm -hmm. single show that you do, you're building upon the last show that you've done. And it just keeps getting better and better. So for me, I was like, you know, if the industry hadn't changed as much as it did, and that was the only reason why, well, one of the, I had the car accident too, so that was another reason why I had to step out. But the industry at the time that I was, that I had the car accident and it was kind of forced to leave for a, for a while and that I had intentions of going back. I was actually also training in martial arts too at the time and had to step away from that. Oh, wow. But, uh, the industry was shifting in a direction that I was not willing to go in, um, you know, personally and professionally. So I kind of stepped away from it a little. And when I had the car accident, it gave me time to reflect on a lot of stuff. So when it was time for me to go back, when I had healed and I was ready to start training again, the industry, I'd been keeping an eye on it while I was away from it for a while. And, mm -hmm. you know, th th they started out like the industry when I started in, you know, it's kind of, this is kind of going off topic a little, but when I started with fitness, it was, you know, they only had two categories. You know, at the time, actually, they only had one that was bodybuilding. You were either a female bodybuilder or a male bodybuilder. 
And then they introduced the category of figure. And there was another category called fitness, but very, very few women participate in that. That's actually the category where a lot of gymnastics women would participate in because they got to do a fitness routine, almost like a dance gymnastics oh, type routine okay. as part you. of their presentation. Right. So that was, you know, a very small, limited amount of people. And then you had figure. And when figure came out, it was categorized as a modeling category. You know, you came out and you did what was called model poses, but they didn't tell you what those model poses were. They kind of left it open for interpretation. Mm -hmm. So when I first started, it was like, what, what do I do? What, you know, I, I have no idea what I'm doing, like, but nobody did. <laughs> yeah, nobody did. And the, they were never, they, there was never any clear definition as to what they were looking for. So it evolved on its own and kind of grew, but as it evolved and grew, the, the, judging of the category changed. You know, the women were, went from model, you know, model physiques to more bodybuilding physiques. And then it mm -hmm. became like, they didn't even know where to draw the line between figure and bodybuilding. It was like, where do you, where's the distinction between, you know, you have your bodybuilders very, you know, very built, very muscular. And then you had the figure women that you categorize as more um, of bikini models, you know, when it first came okay. out. So then, the women were just getting um, more and more muscular. So they came out with them with the bikini category and they said, okay, well now we have bikini. So now bikini category is very clearly defined as women that are very lean, very toned, um, no very visible striations, but yet some clear definition between the muscles, some separation. But then again, that category started, the women started becoming more and more big. It just kept evolving. So now it's like, it's to the point where I'm like, you know, Women started getting into, um, and it's it's not a secret. It's been going on for for decades. It was going on when you know, if you ever watch, you know, like Pumping Iron or any of those yeah. documentaries, you know, um, steroids. Steroids is huge in the in the fitness industry. I'm not saying That's everybody saying does well. them. Yep, not saying everybody does them. I'm not. There are many natural athletes that do very well in in the industry, but it's dominated by steroids and i was not willing to go to the lengths that others were willing to go to get that trophy at the end of the day I, because at the end of the day it was me sacrificing my health and putting my health on the line exactly. to go to that level so and i had a lot of a lot of friends in the industry that were in it for well over 20 years that had never gotten their pro card and they were just exhausting themselves physically mentally and you could see their bodies were breaking down they were having hormonal issues and thyroid issues and yeah yes exactly a lot of them came down with eating disorders because they couldn't distinct anymore between eating clean and and being obsessive about counting macros and calories so i walked away from it you know and it happened like i said at a time i was actually training for a show i had the car accident put me out for a while and when I went back, I said, you know what? I started training for another show. And then I said, you know something? This isn't going to work anymore. I think I'm going to, as we say, hang up my shoes and <laughs> start, you know, exploring shoes, other put the areas. the boots on. <laughs> yep. And traded my clear heels for, for some wrestling boots. Exactly. So I had been watching wrestling from the time I was a young girl. I was always fascinated with the, with the business. I always had a love for the business. And like I said, I, I spent, you know, I went to college after I graduated high school and I took care of my grandmother who was very sick. I took care of my two aunts who were very sick. And then I took care of my mom who got very sick. So I spent a good portion of my life playing caretaker to a lot of family members. And I, I don't regret a minute of it. Family, I would do it again. I'd do it again and again, especially for men having my mom back. I would do it over and over again. Uh, I totally can understand that. Yeah. I, trust me, I lost my mom. Yeah. Nine months ago, nine months oh my God, and seven I'm so days sorry. ago. I'm so sorry. And so you understand I the club totally that we understand. belong to is a club. COVID, never COVID is such a shitty thing too. So <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. My mom right. passed from ovarian cancer and I cancer sometimes fucking sucks. <laughs> it does. It does. And, and you know, the funny thing is, I shouldn't say funny thing, but the ironic thing is, is my mom was, you know, she smoked cigarettes. That was her vice, but she never drank. She hadn't taken a time all in over 20 years. She hadn't had a cold in over 20 years. I kid you not. She ate organic. She ate healthy. She exercised. She came down with ovarian cancer. So it's like one of those things where when they gave me the diagnosis, I said, you have her confused with somebody else. Are you my, sure? <laughs> yeah. My mom is not a, a candidate for cancer. And mind you, 
when they checked her lungs, they said her lungs were as clear as a bell. I mean, she was running up and down stairs faster than a 20 year old could. You know what's crazy about that? <laughs> so, like, <laughs> yeah. You look at, you look at, like, there's, it, it, it boggles the mind. Like, it trips me out that, yeah. you know, like, like Luke Harper, um, oh, you know, yeah. Brody yeah. Lee, yeah. yeah. Brody Lee passed away suddenly. He was perfectly healthy. Like, yeah. And then yeah. just, just deteriorated like, like real quick i had the pleasure of meeting his wife actually um when we were preparing amanda. for the showcase and I, I met amanda and i met her two children um both wonderful i mean her youngest son is he's he negative is one. Four, <laughs> well negative yeah negative one is is um is uh brody lee jr brody but jr., the yeah. younger one He's so sweet. He, I remember he was he was passing by us. He goes, "Excuse me, ladies," and he's just this little, you know. And I go, "Oh my gosh, she's just like the most precious thing." But negative one um, has an incredible personality. I mean, a big personality, you for know. Such and a small kid, right? For such a small <laughs> kid, and um, he just loves it, you know. Like he was wrestling around with QT and Cody, and you know, a couple of the guys from the Dark Order, and he's just, you know, he's actually. If you look at uh, my picture that i put up on my facebook page of um the day we had our showcase yeah, you'll, you'll actually see yeah negative ones in the in the yeah. picture on um coach vance's shoulders and uh he's incredible he was he was part of the showcase he's just an incredible little uh little guy love him and amanda's a wonderful woman so i really uh was humbled by meeting them and you're right she, she i messaged her yeah we, we did a we did a because 2020 was really horrible mm -hmm. we lost a yeah. lot of people you yeah. know Shag Gaspar was a good friend of mine. Yeah. You know, we lost him. And then, like, you know, like Supreme from XBW was a good friend of mine. We lost him. And then it was yeah. like, it was like a fucking cavalcade of like death. I know. You know. And then when John died, it was like, wow, that, you know, that really sucked. Like, he was like, you know, and then like the reporter that was battering her and bashing her, trying to, you know, get the information out of her, what happened. I'm like, dude, her husband just fucking died. Let it go. Yeah. You know, and uh, I sent her an email. We did a, we did a, a podcast dedicated to other people who passed away. And I sent her an email with the link of the show. And she replied back. And she was like, thank you so much. And I'm not afraid to admit it. Like, that totally just, it made me, I just, I was bawling. Like, I just started bawling because, like, I, I I felt all that, 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 hurt and pain that she was going through because like literally i'm still like here it is nine months later i'm still going through it i know you know? i know three years later and i you know i talk to my mom every day i go outside you know when i let the dog out and you know good morning mom you know and i kind of talk to her and let her know what's going on it gives me a sense of peace and comfort you know to just still have those conversations with her because you know let's face it if i ever had i'm an only child so if i ever had a piece of news good bad or otherwise if i was having a bad day yeah let's go i mean always hey mom it's me hey mom and her she always say hey listen i got a pot of coffee up you know pick up some napoleons or cannolis from the bakery and you know let's just sit down and have coffee and cannolis and and hash it out and tell me what's going on and God, I, I give my left arm to have another one of those coffee and Napoleon sessions again, you know? Well, I tell you, every morning yeah. I get up to go to work, and you see these two belts behind me. There's actually three. There's one below me in my trophy case. I always tell my kids that my most prized possessions, other than my kids, are in that trophy case. Mm -hmm. And my mom's ashes are in that trophy case, yeah. you know? Yeah. And... um my mom she in my house I have like this huge backyard i have like an acre of land behind me and i have like a metal bench in a garden mm -hmm. in my backyard and one day when my mom was sick i showed her a video to a bench mm -hmm. and she said i want to come sit there with you one day <laughs> so my mom passed away four days after she said that to me oh, i'm sorry and i got her ashes and my daughter made this beautiful little glass face with my mom's face. She took these little um, glass marbles mm -hmm. of my mom's favorite colors, and she put them in there, and we took it, and we turned it upside down, and we buried it under the bench mm -hmm. with a can of her ashes. So wow. now she sits there with me every time. <laughs> that's <laughs> you know? really sweet. Yeah, that's and really sweet. I, I, I say that because I feel that your mom would be very proud of the woman that you've become in the industry. Appreciate that. You know, you're living a dream. You know, my mom and my mom, my grandmother were the reasons why I became a wrestler. 
Mm-hmm. So every match, every show, every championship I've ever won, every country I've ever visited is because mm-hmm. of them. Yeah. yeah. So you, me you, too, mom and grandma. Yep. You now have a clear path to a great career, and you have motivation. Yeah. That's for freaking sure. awesome. Yeah. You got great training. You're you're you're, you're a good person, and I see good things happening for you. Really so, appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. With that, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you where you can reach her online. Now, keep in mind, yellow dirty perverts. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to slide in her DMs. But <laughs> if you want to find her on Twitter, you can find her here on Twitter at Principal Karma. You can also find her on Instagram. The Instagram is Karma All Good. And if you want to find her on Facebook, once again, don't try to slide her DMs. She's married. <laughs> Karma Dean. You yes. find her there. So thank you very much for joining us here. And I'm going to tell you this. Thank you. I hope that one day, the next time I have you on this podcast, you've, <laughs> you've, you've debuted on AEW Dynamite or Dark. Oh, I really. Or Dark from Elevation. Your, from your mouth to Tony Khan's ears. <laughs> everybody, wants that, everybody wants that coin cash. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. <laughs> the yeah. coin is just known. Yes. But ladies and gentlemen, this has been your boy, the Franchise Player, Double B Bad Blood, here with Karma Dean on the Roundtable with Carlson Podcast. Thank you very much for joining me. And you Thank you always, very much for having me. You always have a seat at the table. I appreciate that. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Thank you, BJ. Later. Take care.